Hello, I'm Consuelo Mack. I want to tell you about a new opportunity to watch Consuelo Mack Wealth Track before the program appears on public television. As a subscriber, you can see programs 48 hours in advance of the general public and also find timely interviews and commentaries exclusive to Wealth Track premium subscribers. If you're interested, just go to wealthtrack.com for more information. Thank you. This week on Wealth Track, in a market dominated by high frequency computer driven trading, how does the individual survive and flourish? Clearbridge Advisors' great investor, Hirsch Cohen, takes us back to the basics of good old fashioned value investing in a TV exclusive next on Consuelo Mac Wealth Track. The company you keep is also the company we keep. Together we help provide a lifetime of guaranteed income and investment solutions. Additional funding provided by Loomis Sales, investors seeking exceptional opportunities globally, research affiliates, an efficient index for an inefficient market, Wintergreen, your home for global value and Rosalind P. Walter. Hello and welcome to this edition of Wealth Track. I'm Consuelo Mack. Investors are spooked and confidence is key to investing. When you buy a company's stock, you are counting on growing business prospects, earnings, and in many cases, dividend payments. Otherwise, why take the chance? Well, that's a question many investors are answering with sell orders. They've been pulling money out of domestic stock funds in particular, with large cap mutual funds suffering more than two years of monthly outflows. Investors are being buffeted by a rotating and repetitive list of worries, political, economic, and global. The budget divide in Washington, government deficits, high unemployment, the European debt crisis. Being overlooked are the positive signs. Companies are making money. A recent stream of better than forecast reports in manufacturing, construction, and retailing. The stimulative seeds of recovery being planted by record low interest rates and falling commodity prices. The huge decline in oil prices, which is the equivalent of a big tax cut for businesses and individuals. Exacerbating the sense of uncertainty and crisis is the nearly unprecedented volatility in the markets. According to a recent Grant's Interest Rate Observer published by WealthTrack regular Jim Grant, at the end of World War II, the average American investor held the average American equity for four long years. By 2000, those four years had dwindled to eight months. By 2008, eight months had shrunk to just two months. Grant speculates that maybe the holding period is down to 20 minutes. Who knows? What we do know is that the pace of trading has accelerated to beyond warp speed. According to Grants, which sourced a speech by a senior Bank of England regulator named Andrew Haldane, and we will have a link to it on our wealthtrack.com, computer-generated high-frequency trading accounts for as much as 75% of U.S. stock trading. Six years ago, such trading accounted for no more than a fifth of the trading volume. Human-to-human -human interaction has been replaced by computer-to-computer -computer and algorithm-to-algorithm -algorithm trades, tens of thousands of them happening in microseconds or millions of a second. So how can regular long-term investors survive in a nanosecond market? That's one of the many questions I asked this week's great investor guest in a WealthTrack television exclusive. Hirsch Cohen is ClearBridge Advisors' Chief Investment Officer, Senior Portfolio Manager, and Co-Manager of its Dividend Strategy Portfolios, including the Leg Mason ClearBridge Equity Income Builder Fund. For 31 years, he co-managed the Partners Appreciation Fund, being named finalist for Morningstar's Equity Fund Manager of the Year in 2008, and to the exclusive Forbes Honor Roll eight times. As you will see, Hirsch's perspective is refreshing and invaluable. It's interesting. I used to see a stock fade or be down two points, and I would call our trading desk, say, track down, what's going on? What, what's the news on this thing? And what I learned was there was no news. Now it's just a function of the, the fast traders or a, an ETF uh, wagging, the, uh, wagging the dog and carrying everything down. 
And so I've stopped asking. And what I've learned to do now is just to try to try, I don't say I always successfully do it, try not to chase strength because the strength can be random and try to wait for periods of weakness to buy the companies that I want to buy. I mean, I don't know how else to do it. What constitutes a period of weakness? I mean, is it actually like, you know, a period or, or is it, gee, the stock's down to 34 and this is what I've been waiting for, you know, and you put your order in right well, then well, and we, there? Well, we do use, I, I like to use levels, you know, it's not a science. I like to use levels that I'm willing to, uh, to, to buy a stock or stocks at and uh, we keep a list of that, and I go over that with my team right. um, fairly frequently. And then if we, so it can, it could, that, that might be 10% below the market. I mean, a stock might be at a level that we're, we're no longer interested in buying it, but if it got down to a certain point. So you say it might not be on a day, but if you get a period, if you get a month of weakness, then uh, you do it. So for example, the stock WW Granger is one that um, we, uh, we, I missed it all the way up, and then it went up to 160, and it came down to 130 in the summer, and that was a level that we felt comfortable. So in, in a period of market weakness, uh, we, we took a, uh, a small position for, for, for individuals. And, and uh, so there's no formula. You just, so it can be a matter of, of, of a minutes or an hour, or, it can, or where you have an idea that you want to buy a stock, but you're just waiting for it. There might be a stock that we're buying on a regular basis, let's say, um, Procter and Gamble. Let's say we're buying it on a regular Long basis. Long time holding of yours, Long right? Long time holding, and um, so, but you don't want to you don't want to be buying it on days when the market is is up three percent. You'd rather be buying it as hard as it is on a, uh, towards the end of a day like today or tomorrow morning when when it, it's down. Of course, you know you never know if you're right. You might be paying a point too much or something. So, so the point is that approach still works. As, as far okay. as you can, so it's okay. far. That, so, does that pr approach still work? I hope so. <laughs> I think so. I don't know a better way to do it. Is there a better way to do it? If there's a better way to do it, I don't know it. <laughs> I, have this, uh, I have this line that I use now on a day like today. It's, it, I don't mean to sound glib, but not one of my companies cut their dividend today. <laughs> so I so mean, that's you know, a positive, people, right? People look at, people look at the market in, in, uh, too, too closely. That's the trouble. And people... Uh, People never stay around for the, for the good gains, and, and it's hard. I, I, I don't know. There's no formula. It's just, just hard work. You want to own great companies and try to buy them when, during either, either daily or weekly or monthly weakness, and, and uh, you hope you're not overpaying, and um, you have to be willing to trim if they go way above what you think is fair value, but of course, that hasn't been much, has not been much of a problem in, uh, recently. <laughs> So have you seen any long-term impact of, of this, the volatility and the trading on, on actually the stock's performance that you invest in these, you know, these value, high-quality stocks? Uh, the, moves are, the moves are accentuated on a very short-term basis, clearly. On the long-term performance, ultimately, what, define long-term, I'll define long-term as, as decades, which is not what, really what you're asking, but long-term, what I, what I see is that earnings, dividends, and stock prices, if you graph them, the graphs will superimpose. On a 20-year basis, that's probably true. On a 10-year basis, clearly, that, that wasn't true. Dividends went up, um, uh, earnings went up for many companies, stock prices went down in the last decade. 2008, some dividends went up, some er, uh, earnings went up, and stock prices could have been down 30 or 40 percent. So on a one-year basis uh, or three-month basis, no, they, they, uh, um, they do affect things, yes. But on a longer-term basis, on a very long-term basis, which is how I, I try to think and what I can tell you firsthand from, uh, from stocks that I've owned, it, it does work. Mm -hmm. It really does work. So I'll put it this way. Look at the overall market. I tell people this. I like to, when I talk, I like to talk about this. I say, we, all, we have all these problems now. They're very obvious. And the market volatility scares people away. But let's go back to 1973, 1974. We had a president and vice president resign in disgrace. You had oil prices, you had an oil embargo. Oil prices went from $3 to they, they went up eventually tenfold and you couldn't even get gasoline. They had, right. to do, they had to line up around the block. The country was torn apart by the Vietnam War. Uh, New York City uh, tax-free bonds were selling at 50 cents on the dollar. It was effectively bankrupt. And I, and I tell people, I ask people, well, guess where the Dow Jones average was? And they'll throw, some people, you know, they'll know, but they'll say, you know, 3,000. And I say, 
580 is where it bottomed. 580, not 5,800, 580. So it's up 20 times. And oh, by the way, there have been all these dividends in that same period of time too. So you know, the stock market really, uh, I, We've had a lot of trouble since then, too. You know, you know, Mexico went bankrupt. You had an SNL crisis in 1990. You had 9-11. You had many, right. many, many. You had the uh, not crash of 87. And perspective helps, which is why we have you here on Wealth so. Track to remind us of these things, <clears throat> that things aren't as bad as we think. It, you know, I'm thinking of it. So it doesn't sound like you're doing a lot differently. Your average holding period has been four yeah, years. Yeah, 20, 20 to 20. 30% turnover, so right. four, you know, you know, four to three, three to five years, I would say. So, so that hasn't hasn't and changed. And some some holdings forever. So. And so, so so that hasn't hasn't changed. I mean, no. It, it, no. No. Why would it? Only reason is. Yeah. Because of the market volatility. If if, if I mean, are, are you I finding try to cycles? Use it, try to use it for. Uh, if people would learn to use it for their advantage by taking advantage of the of the periods of, of weakness, but what really upsets me is the kind of call that I got today from an old friend whose money I manage, who's done really well over the years, who, who's 63 years old, and he called and said, I can't stand this volatility. And I said, well, I, I don't even know what to sell in your portfolio. Uh, uh, you know, everything is good. He said, but, he said, but I'm really nervous, and if, and, if, and if things crash, I mean, so he's, he's done well. He's a market veteran. He's been around forever. He does a little trading on his own outside, but he's, you know, I've got these great long-term investments. I, when people like that start to feel that way, that, 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 that's, that, makes, that makes me nervous about, uh, 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 about people never meeting their goals. And I don't mean to sound like a shill for the stock market, but I believe in the stock market. Right. And, and what I, what, at a time when there, there's, there's savers are earning nothing, uh, and, and stocks give dividends of, high quality stocks give dividends, in many instances, two, three times the rate of the 10-year treasury, then you, you I, mean, I think you really want to be thinking about some stocks, and the mistake people, and yet money has been flowing out of mutual funds at, at right, rates. Right, stock mutual funds. Uh, stock mutual, right. equity mutual funds at a greater pace, I just read, than it was in 2008. And at a time when people probably should be thinking about high quality stocks and thinking about dividend growth, in, in, in the, uh, they're not, they're going the other way. And in, even, even the last decade, uh, between 2000 and the end of 2009, the S&P 500 dividends went up over 5% compounded, including the travesty in the banks all cutting their dividends at the end. A, a, a well-managed portfolio of, uh, of high quality companies where if you were fortunate you avoided a, a lot of the collapse in the financials, compounded at somewhere between eight and nine percent. Compound, that's, you know, that's a mm -hmm. double in your income. Your colleague Bill Miller, who uh, one of the past times he's been in Welltrack was talking about how that, that one of the uh, advantages, the kind of the one, in, one advantage that individual investors have is that they have time. They don't have the pressure of quarterly performance numbers. They don't have the pressure. You can wait for that perfect You can wait, and, and, and so, but, so the time but arbitrage. people don't, people don't, that's and, the trouble. And, and, and so, but, but talk to me about the advantage that individual investors have with time. Well, you don't, okay. We, we're the perfect, only ones. Perfect example. Yeah. In institutional accounts, foundations, endowments, in mutual fund, you're benchmarked and, and everybody sees your numbers every day. I mean, I go every morning and I check how my mutual fund is doing compared to all the other funds that I, because that I look at. Because you have to? Because you have to. Because, you, because it determines how many stars you have, how many... Uh, every day, Hirsch, you do that? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Well, you are, you are obsessive. <laughs> it's a bit obsessive. And, but I'm sure every fund manager pro uh -huh. does that, I would, I would imagine. And no individual, not a single individual, I, I, I think that's true in my career, has ever said to me, you trailed your benchmark by 2%, you're no good. But I can't tell you how many institutional accounts I lost in 1999 because I had 25% cash. We're not paying you to run cash. You don't know what you're doing. So it's frustrating. So the individual has a huge advantage. They don't have to answer to a committee. They don't have to answer to, I love Morningstar. Their write-ups are grand. I love Morningstar. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I'm, I, if I were a younger portfolio manager, um, I, I would have had to be fully invested in Microsoft and GE at 50 times earnings to outperform 
It's hard. As an individual, you can pick and choose, pick and choose. Pick great companies. Uh, if you want to speculate, you can speculate with a portion of your money, and you're not beholden. If you're, if you're wrong, well, I, I tell people, you can buy anything you want, but if you're wrong, just don't forget to sell it, because that, that's the mistake. That it, the, the individuals, unfortunately, I think, tend to hold on to losers too long, but they, that's and, a And why do they do that? Well, you don't want to admit you're wrong. I see. Or they keep thinking it's going to come back and yeah. they'll sell when yeah, they well, you know, even. Yeah, well, you know, that's what makes, makes uh, it's what, what used to make kind of mar I'm not sure if fund managers, for example, are any different. They are individuals. They just run bigger pools of money. So a stock goes down and, and uh, there's a little disbelief. And then a stock, you know, you hope it to rally. There's the hope phase. And then, uh, and then it goes down more and you hope. And then finally you're saying, if I ever get even, I'm going to get out. That's what people, I think, tend to do. And then, of course, that's when the stock is improved and often keeps going. It's, so Crazy. individual stocks, I yeah. mean... Individuals can wait. Warren, I'm sorry, Warren Buffett said it the best. He said, you can sit there with your bat on your shoulder and wait for the fat pitch. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do. Is the stock market stacked against individuals any more than it ever has been? I mean, what's your sense of how individuals fare well, is it, that's buying a stocks great themselves? Great question. Is it stacked against individuals? I think it scares the devil out of individuals. Is it stacked against them? No, I wouldn't say it's stacked against them. You still have great companies they can buy. It's still the most democratic institution in the world. Anybody can plunk their money down and buy stocks. I think, no, it's not stacked against it. And, and, and people can, can uh, uh, have their money managed. They can manage it themselves. I mean, no, it's not stacked against the individual. I think there's there's huge amount of, of uh, information available out there. You know, I was talking to one of our traders today, and I said, why do you think there's so much volatility? And, and she said, the information flow is so rapid that people react to it so rapid. Individuals don't have to do that. They have, they can get the information, but they can filter it. I've told uh, the uh, young colleagues of mine, uh, I said, I don't want to make decisions during the heat of the day. Talk to me about buy and sell decisions early in the morning when we don't have the pressures of the, of the market. Individuals can do that. It's hard to do, though, when you're sitting there you know, watching things. It's, it's easy to get carried away. So that's interesting. So you're saying talk to me before the market opens, essentially. Yeah, about what, what kind of what, what our plans are. Right. So, so you're going to implement... Don't make a decision based on what the market's doing. So don't be reactive. Don't be right. Right. Be proactive. Right. right. So that's a novel idea, Hirsch. I actually have an investment plan. <laughs> 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 I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I'm sure this is not what I did to a lot of the young people. Well, that it's you not talk a daily to. investment plan, but you should right. have some kind no, of outline exactly. of what the stocks you want to own, the kind and of stocks you want to own, and, and have some yeah. and have some price sets and, and uh, makes sense to me. So earnings. What are earnings telling you as far as the well? That's the big thing right now because earnings it. have been really good. Dividend payout ratios. That is the percentage of cash that that a percentage of earnings that companies are paying out is still low. Um, you, you have dividend yields that are uh, incredibly attractive compared to, I don't know how else you, you, you measure it compared to, compared to fixed income investments. Mm -hmm. uh, do I think earnings will be up strongly next year? I do not. Do I think they could be down? I do. Um, but, it, but I think the market, that's why the market was down in, in, uh, in July and August. Right. I think the market was understood that earnings were not going to be up strongly next year. So the market, you know, the market's a discounting mechanism. I think it knows that earnings are not going to be great. Interest rates. So what are interest rates telling you about the market? You've got to buy them. That's what Bernanke's telling you. You've got to step out on the, you have to step out on the risk curve. I mean, that with interest rates at zero and they're telling you, what is it? He's telling you interest rates are going to be at zero for two years. <laughs> So, you know, it's kind of kind of doesn't gives, get much clearer than that. Kind of gives the shaft to savers. Yeah. And so he's saying to savers, you 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 sorry. need to do something risky, not sorry, but step out on the risk curve. And mm -hmm. let me tell you it's frustrating because my whole career for individuals, I always would have some portion in, you know, fixed income security. It was easy. It was easy. You could you could uh, especially as people would head into retirement or whatever, you could uh, get Just you know get your, into bonds. get your good get your get your good returns from the bond, kind of get your anchor there, and then have the stocks. And, and actually, dividends now are better than they the yields are better in stocks now than they than they have been. And and I'm telling people now because they they're, they're saying, how am I going to retire? What am I going to do? And I, I say, you're going to have to take you're gonna take out a principal. It's hard. Very hard. Yeah. That's anathema to a lot of people. I know. Right? I know. So, so, so when people come to you, Hirsch, and, and they say, you know, I, wear, I need income, 
Yeah. Look, I'm re yeah. I'm going to retire. Yeah. I need income. Where do where do where do I go? I what send do you, them to consuelomaxwealthtrack.com <laughs> and tell them to look at my list of dividend stocks. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Which it's one a of good our list, most popular features. It's a good list. <laughs> so tell me about this list of great balance sheets and yeah. high dividend yields. Growing dividends. Growing yields. dividends. High, growing, high balance sheet and growing you know, dividends. So is what do I list. tell people? I said diversification. You know, 25, 30 stocks, uh, companies that tend to make products that, that people want or need. Um, the balance sheets are good. The di there's a history of dividend increases or the ability for companies to raise dividends, but the, the, the history of them, it's a, it's a, I think it's a really good list. I, you know, I, I really, and in, and in fact, I, I, own, I own them all. I own them all myself, because we actually have a program that does that, and, I, and that's I have, my two biggest investments are that program, the separately managed account, and, and the equity income mutual fund. Those are good. So I'm not, again, I'm not touting those, but I, I, mean, I like them, I believe in it, and, and why wouldn't I? So if individuals come and say, what do you do? I say, these are great companies. So tell me, uh, Procter & Gamble has been paying dividends for 100 and some odd years and, and has raised it for 50 consecutive, whatever it is, 50 consecutive. Kimberly Clark, it's like a bond with a, um, with a rising coupon. Kimberly, it's an incredibly well-run company. People are gonna still be uh, using uh, diapers and facial tissue and, and paper towels and, and disposable um, hospital things. And it was yielding four and a quarter percent a year ago and, and they've raised the dividend. They've raised the dividend every year for 40 years. And Tom Falk has done a great job uh, running the company. Johnson & Johnson, even though they stubbed their toe with the consumer products and it drives me crazy, still raised their dividend 6% this year and they've raised their dividend every year since, uh, I, I, I don't when. know when. Right. 3M has raised its dividend every year for, I don't know, 45 years. And they make products that everybody, uh, those, are, those, are, those are good. So how do you use that list? I mean, when, when do you invest levels, in them? When do you... We set levels on, on what prices we'll pay. And when they hit it, when they hit those levels, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll trigger the buys. And if stocks get, if they get too expensive, uh, we'll, we'll uh, maybe nip some off. But, but the point is, this is like a core list. Core list. And so as individual Won't investors. Won't change that much. Hmm? As individual investors, I mean, should we have a, a, some sort of a core list as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I believe there are certain companies, this is always dangerous to go on camera and say this for posterity, but I mean, I think there are certain companies that have proven their ability that one can own forever. Why, you know, why wouldn't somebody own, I mean, Exxon, apart from the fact people don't want to own energy, you know, Exxon is still reviled by some people for value, but you know, Exxon, Chevron. They're great. They raise their dividend every year. They buy in shares. They do the right thing for shareholders. Uh, high return on capital. Uh, I think those are kind of hold forever kind of companies. Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, 3M. Um, those are uh, it's a good list. One investment for a long-term diversified portfolio. What are you going to tell us that we should all own <laughs> the, some uh, of? The Consuelo Mac slash HirschCohenWealthTrack.com dividend grower list. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, I'll never, it's funny. I was asked by our, our, our IR people to talk to a magazine and give them our one best stock idea. I said, no, we don't do that. I said, talk to Consuelo Mac. She knows. If she asks for one idea, we give 20 or 30 stocks. It's a good, I think, why would somebody, there's this old joke about uh, sports handicappers. You know, they'll give half, half their customers one side of the uh, of the bet and they'll give half their customers the other side and so they're always going to have 50 percent of the people who think they're really smart why stake why stay why would i tell people just one stock i mean i, I don't how could it could be right or it could be wrong and of course we will have that list <laughs> once again in one of our most popular uh sections of our website wealthtrack.com the hirsch cohen's list will be there and I know that people are going to be. It's, it's a list that we have put. To get it. It's a list that we have put together. But it's a. I mean, anybody could put a list like that together. But it requires some work, and we do put a lot of work, and it's a lot of years of experience and judgment. I think so. I do want to say it's. Uh, it's. But it's a really. It's a group of really nice companies, and and so, uh, you know, I look back at last year's list. It's, it's a nice list. It's. A, it is a. Very I think nice they've. List. I think they've all raised the dividend. I think they have too. So. Well, Hirsch Cohen, thank you so much for being with <laughs> it's us. It's a pleasure. Chief Investment Officer, Thanks. Leg Mason Clearbridge okay. Advisors. This is fun. Thank many you. Other I hope it's, it's, this is fun in a very difficult environment. It thank is. You. You, it you. is. You're such a relief. So. I would love talking to you. So, so and thanks, vice Hirsch. versa. Thank you. At the conclusion of every wealth track, we give you one suggestion to help you build and protect your wealth over the long term. 
This week's action point, check out Hirsch Cohen's great balance sheets and dividend growers list. Hirsch talked about buying great companies on weakness. These companies have been suffering along with the rest of the market. And even though large cap stocks have held up better than mid and small cap ones this year, investors have been bailing out of large cap mutual funds for more than two years now. Their selling has created both price and income opportunities for the rest of us. As mutual fund and hedge fund manager Whitney Tilson told clients recently, he and his fellow value investors have never seen such a disconnect between company prospects and what the stocks are doing. Next week on WealthTrack, great investor and financial thought leader Rob Arnott is going to join us. He has been correctly bearish on developed world stock markets, but he has some alternatives to discuss with us. And for those of you who want to see our WealthTrack interviews ahead of the pack, we have a new opportunity for you. Subscribers can now see our program as early as Thursday morning on our website, along with timely interviews exclusive to WealthTrack web subscribers. To sign up, go to our website, WealthTrack.com. Thank you for watching, and make the week ahead a profitable and a productive one. Additional funding provided by Loomis Sales. Investors seeking exceptional opportunities globally. Research affiliates. An efficient index for an inefficient market. Wintergreen, your home for global value. And Rosalind P. Walter. Thank you.